do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hse and iit je main and advanced videos subject soil mechanics chapter shear strength of a soil failure criteria welcome students now we discuss what are the factors which governs the relative sliding of the two blocks of the soil mass and we in turn will discuss all the failure criteria so before discussing this failure criteria we'll uh, just go back to the history and see that in 7 in 16th century generally a, a scientist whose name is more has pointed out that for an any material for let, let it be an any material if it is been stressed if it is been under an application of a load then there will be a failure inside a material which happens under a critical combination of under a critical combination of a normal and a shear stress so obviously you know that if i consider this is a plane as a plane the normal stress obviously acts perpendicular to that surface or a plane so this is the normal we call it as normal stress and if there is a stress which acts tangentially or parallelly to the plane we call that stress as a shear stress so in the same example if there is a stress which acts parallelly or tangentially to the surface we call it as a shear stress so more has given us that the 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 the, the failure occurs the failure occurs under a critical combination of under a critical combination of normal and shear stress so obviously if you take an example of a steel and if you apply a tensile load or tensile force t then if 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 the material fails in pure tension mode then the material will detach as shown in the figure so this we call it as a pure tension failure the the material will separate into the two parts like this or so this is a pure tension failure but generally it will not happen in case of the steel because steel is a pure reductile material and hence in case of a steel if you observe there will be a cup and cone failure under a tensile force so there exists a, a plane of a failure like this which is inclined at some angle alpha with the direction of with the direction of the tensile force so the obviously there there is a some angle alpha and this fail this plane at which the, the there is a failure so this plane depends upon the normal stresses acting on it and the shear stresses acting on it so these two combination has to be a critical in order to uh, in order to have the, the plane as a failure plane remember so that's what the more told us in 16th century but uh, in 17th uh, 76 the coulomb led coulomb led put forward his own theory by seeing a towards a block theory we call it as so generally if we consider a block a as shown in the figure so this block obviously has its own self weight and when it is resting on the surface it does has an normal reaction perpendicular to the plane at which the block rest so this normal reaction which the 
which which is there at the interface of this block and the plane at which the block is resting so this we call it as the normal reaction and if we try to displace the block by applying a tangential force f then obviously there exists a frictional component of the force which is which now comes into picture in between your block surface and the plane surface at which the block is resting so this is the frictional force and hence due to this frictional force as long as your tangential force is less than the frictional force your block will not move at all but if f exceeds the frictional force then there will be a horizontal movement of the block so therefore if i if we take the frictional force like this and normal force like this so there exist a re, there exist a cone there exists a cone a virtual cone at which if the, if there is if inside a cone if there is a resultant of the normal force and frictional force there is no movement of the block the block is in the equilibrium so so same theory goes for the soil so coulomb told us that if we consider the soil solids separated by a plane like this and on this plane let's suppose this is a normal force acting on it and the the shear the shear strength or or the shear stress which is mobilized by this soil depends on this normal force and as well as this shear strength which is mobilized across this plane depends on the cohesion which is at the interface of these two soil solids so he given he has given a beautiful theory and suggested that the shear strength of a soil is the combination of the frictional force frictional force and the cohesive resistance amongst these two particles so he he has given that the strength is been divided into two components like a cohesion part and second is the frictional part so obviously he defined the strength in the in terms of the total stress because in 1776 the effect the concept of effective stress has not been introduced so coulomb told us that the shear strength of a soil is nothing but the part of a strength which is contributed by the force of attraction between the par two particles having the same origin and same nature which is nothing but the cohesion part and the other component which obviously depends on the normal force which is nothing but the frictional component so the frictional obviously depends on the normal force sigma n we denote it by the sigma n and obviously if you look at towards the this cone this is the angle of internal resistance phi or angle of the obliquity so we give it as a tan phi which which generally we call it as a coefficient of a friction mu because frictional force we write in terms of the normal reaction and as mu times of n and mu we write it as tan of phi or tan of the angle of your internal resistance or the shearing resistance so this s is nothing but your c equals to sigma s equals to c plus sigma n times of tan phi so that's what the coulomb told in 19 in, in 1776 so but again if we go back to the more theory more has given more has given a one beautiful equation that your strength or the strength of a soil is can be uniquely been functioned in terms of the normal stresses acting on the velar plane and coulomb had coulomb uh, through his theory has given an equation in terms of the total stress as and coulomb it told us that the shear strength of a soil 
is the combination of the frictional and a cohesion which is nothing but the force of attraction between the two particles having the same origin as sigma n s equals to c plus sigma n of the tan phi so remember here whatever the c which is nothing but the cohesion and angle of internal friction are there so these two parameters are generally referred as the shear strength parameters of a soil so if the c and phi if the c and phi both are if the if, if they are having larger values it means the soil has larger shear strength but again these values c and phi again depends upon the nature of test that you conduct the the field condition at which the soil is being subjected and your again your construction sequence program which imposes a different levels of the pore water pressure at different stages so again this depends upon the nature of work that you are involved in so if you plot uh, a graph if you plot a graph of normal stress versus the shear stress then the mohr has from the mohr equation this shear strength is being this envelope is being a, a little bit like a curved curved line like this and uh, if you look back to the uh, coulomb's equation then it merely appears to be a straight line so this curved line is for your mohr theory and uh, this your straight line is for your coulomb theory so and if you again combine these two theories that, which we call uh, always refer as a mohr coulomb theory the mohr coulomb theory is a more generic theory and mohr coulomb theory has laid, again this uh, the equation looks like a same but the mohr theory coulomb theory has given the two uh, set of the equations one is based on your total stress and one is based on your again the effective stress so the theory has given a general expression for the shear strength as s equals to c or c dash plus sigma or sigma n dash tan phi or phi dash so this is a general combined expression so when we talk about the c we talk about sigma n or we talk about phi so these represents the stresses in terms of the total so it in the, so it in it includes the effective as well as the pore water pressures and when we reflect this as by the dash these indicate your effective stresses so we can use either a ct or c dash either in terms of the total or in terms of the effective stress so this is the general expression for the mohr coulomb theory but remember one important point of discussion still has been left so if you have a condition or we call it as a stress condition lying below the envelope lying below the envelope like this so if if you consider the point number 1 then the point number one we generally refer as the condition which is nothing but a, we, we call it as a safe no harm at all because the stresses at which the soil is being subjected is less than the failure stresses because the stresses corresponding to the failure are lying on this line and if we again take a point number two on the line so so if i speak about the point two then again it is just to fail condition so it is we generally call it as failure condition again and if you take other th th three third point which is above your failure envelope uh, it is not possible at all so this uh, stress condition is uh, not possible at all because uh, such condition will not uh, happen at all uh, so that, that that is what it means by not possible because third again it is uh, it, it has the more shear stress as co compared to the present uh, state of the stress but yes uh, with respect to the normal stress uh, and the tangential stress we just uh, look look it back look into a detailed concept of the normal and the tangent stress so whenever you consider a general soil mass lying at a depth z so it is being subjected to the confining stresses 
in all around its direction. So generally we call this as sigma x, sigma y, stress in x direction, stress in y direction. So based on this stress condition, based on this stress condition, we can locate or we can draw this stress condition as for as as in terms of the normal stresses and uh, tangential uh, shear stresses or tangential stresses so we draw this stress condition let's consider uh, we uh, we will consider that uh, sigma x is, sigma x is uh, less than the uh, sigma y okay so generally what happens sigma y is due to the surcharge of the soil which is present uh, above the soil element located at depth z so when we take this when we consider this example sigma y so when we plot it on this axis so we we plot it like this it's a sigma y it's a sigma y and we plot a sigma x which is less than the sigma y like this so this is your sigma x value so when we just draw we, we draw a circle we draw a circle by considering diameter as sigma y minus sigma x so if we draw a circle we call this as the Mohr circle and uh, as long as uh, one, one thing very important to remember as long as your Mohr circle is lying below your failure envelope this is co called as the safe condition of a soil so your if your Mohr circle touches touches to your failure envelope which indicates that uh, the failure is being has been occurred so generally what we do we we take the field stresses from the field values and we take the sa field samples and we test it in the lab and so while testing we will maintain the stresses equivalent to the field stresses in the lab and then we measure all the shear strength properties and we plot this uh, plot this failure envelope or we, or we call we generally call it as more coulomb failure envelope which has the vertical intercept of uh, c and uh, angle of internal uh, friction is phi so after plotting this failure envelope in field while doing the construction phases we try to try to maintain your more coulomb below your failure envelope because when your failure envelope touches the uh, when your more coulomb or stress conditions are such that it touches or it just about to touch your failure envelope these indicates the failure condition and we always try to avoid the failure at field so again you must you must remember that we generate these failure envelopes in the lab by doing the lab test so it again depends on how well you maintain all the uh, pore water pressure during uh, the lab and also the accuracy lies the what is how, how good uh, how well sampling you do you do at the field we will continue our discussion in the uh, next lecture of the related to the stress at a point thank you